welcome back. So today I have uh, the first of the parts I ordered from Motorcycle Live with me. A shad top box. So I've been wanting to put a top box on this bike for years. Um, I just never pulled the trigger on bought one. So today we're going to uh, put on the shad and have a look at it. And there it is. So I have got the shad, the SH34, so it's a 34 litre shad box. And uh, we're gonna take it out now. There she is. Don't need that. So this is the shad box. And you'll notice I've already had these boxes open, so I also got a, a free backrest with it. So when I bought this, when I bought this motorcycle live, the um, the person at the shad stand was really, really helpful, really, 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 really patient. And um, so props to them. And this got here. I was there on Saturday, and it arrived yesterday. So delivery was incredibly quick. So there's the inside of it. You get all your fitting bits with it, and your instructions which we might need to read we'll see i don't know when i put the backrest on it today because you actually have to drill through the plastic itself to fit the backrest so we might not do that but you get your keys with it and everything so it is a lockable and apparently waterproof case um now anyone who's watched your channel for a long time knows that we're going to get to test as a waterproof pretty well here because uh, i have to ride in the rain a lot so these are the kind of you know, call outs they have on their own thing. Designed in Barcelona, high quality, impact resistant, uh, waterproof sealing system. That's the one I'm most interested to test. Two year warranty and it's apparently recyclable. I don't want it recyclable at all. These type of things probably shouldn't be recyclable because if they're recyclable, it means they're gonna break down. Um, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact it's hard plastic. It can be recycled, probably that. So the next port of call is the second box I think this is just the um, the fitting rack so it's like a yeah so this is the actual fitting system for the phaser itself they have loads of these different kits um, the good thing about this is whichever one I fit I can later go back and fit uh, another top box it doesn't have to be the one top box forever it is interchangeable with this one fitting it kind of fits all of their their newer top boxes the only thing that I did find which, uh, which was a bit of a pity is they don't support, now it's because it's an older bike, but they don't actually support their newer panniers for this bike, so there's no fitting rack for that. And their new panniers look way better than their old ones, so I had no interest in getting their old ones. They were too kind of round and lumpy, um, whereas the new design, the new design I think just is a lot sleeker, like this top box, you know. I actually really like that, the carbon look looks nice, but anyway, what can you do? So what we're going to do now is kind of take the seat off the bike and see can we, uh, can we fit this, this case and how long it takes us. So according to the instructions this should be pretty straightforward. Um, it's just a case of actually taking off the side pods as well and working from there. Alright so what we're going to do is break out the tools and take off the side pods and they have to come off first and then we can actually fit the, the fitment rack so you don't take any, off anything else other than seat and side pods. Uh, so we're going to do that. Also, I have a bit of, not a bit, it's really exciting news at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Oh, you fall on me for you creep. <laughs> so I think the only bolt you have to remove is this one. And also, I don't know, can you see that, but that one there. So just at the rear section and down, you'll find it there. And also, if you're looking at the bike, here. I will update you if you need more bolts than that. Turns out you don't even need to open that second bolt, they just have uh, So it's this one bolt and then there's just two grommets here and here, that's it. Okay, so once you have this kind of in place, uh, you need to remove these bolts here. And then there's apparently like a little kind of strappy band that goes in around there. It looks weird and I'm not going to lie, it's not the easiest fitting in the world, but it's okay at the same time if you get me. So this is the fitting kit it comes with. You can see these kind of upper and under bolster, upper and under bolsters that are now gone. Um, and a good selection of bolts. So some of these uh, are going to replace bolts that were there already. And some of them, some of them are just kind of for the kit itself. 
Thank you. Also, Toaster is behind the camera again today. Thanks, Toaster. <laughs> I think Toaster loves its new nickname. And isn't insulted by it at all. So it looks like this bolt replaces this bolt assembly uh, on the side. So we're going to try that now and see how it works out. Right, so... I've just been off camera because uh, this was infuriating and then when I was trying to fit it, I stripped a bolt. Shad's luggage fitting system seems to be made of mainly cheese. Um, so to say that I'm kind of disappointed in the quality wise of the, the fitting frame is an understatement. I'm really, really, really disappointed with that, but I've worked around it. Um, however, even more upsettingly is because Shad have their instructions split over a two-sided page um, I didn't realize that the actual legs of the second bracket this one they need to sit in on top of these bolts so I was planning on just showing the second side so now I'm just going to show you as much as I can um, but just so you're aware this has been really frustrating and infuriating so I'm not in a good mood for it um, so I don't know how much I'll talk but sure look I will see you, I'll show you as much as I can show you as it's humanly possible um, and then we'll hopefully get the top box on today and it'll be somewhat of a success. So this is the homemade fix I had to do. Um, I just drilled out this side and put in a, 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 a different nut to, in order to hold it because I had to drill straight through the actual fixture itself or however you want to describe it. Um, because the actual metal, there was a captive nut um, in it, but by nature, this, these bolts go in at really awkward angles and it's actually quite annoying. Um, and they made the receiving metal out of cheese, uh, which is never a good idea. And then another thing that, and then another thing that has happened, um, if you can look there, is it's actually really badly scratched the, the, the arm. And that's, that, there is nothing I could have done about that. That is literally how the bolts are going in and wiggling. So I'm really, really disappointed with the actual fitting kit. Um, now, maybe it was for the slightly wrong model or something will give Shad the benefit of the doubt. Construction-wise, it looks solid, it looks nice, but yeah, I, I, I can't, I, I'm not going to lie, and I did pay for this 100% myself, so I can tell you this, I'm really disappointed with the overall fit and finish just of this section so far, but we'll keep going, we'll get it on, but um, maybe there's a reason that Jivy are slightly more expensive. So the actual system itself, stay still. The actual system itself does make sense. There's this little kind of bit here. This slots up into the underside of this, which actually has a cutout, um, which is absolutely fine and makes sense. Uh, and then that sits on top and the bolts go down through. It's just that it doesn't, it just doesn't line up well. That's the bulk of the problem is it, do, it just lines up really poorly um, for what it is. Right, so we're back and we've managed to remove the captive nut. So I have made a bit of damage here, but I'll come back and touch it up afterwards. But this is what I was talking about. That, that, that captive bolt was made of absolute cheese. And it's just caused so much delays to me getting this done, um, which really hasn't been enjoyable. Yeah, I should be at home, you know, watching some Netflix by now. Oh, no. Or at the very least, editing this video, because I have to do this tonight, because I've just gotten held up with other things. And yeah. It hasn't been a good time. Right, so we're going to try this again. Um, I'm really not hopeful of it going too well, to be honest, because it's just been an absolute nightmare up until now. Uh, nothing has really fit very well, and I know I'm fitting it to an older bike, but this was supposed to be model specific, so I am, I am still disappointed with how the fitment is and was. Um, I definitely feel like if you're buying something that's model specific, it should fit a little bit better. We'll make the best of it that we can, and we'll get it. We'll get it fitted up, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've one side actually bolted in loosely um, to make sure we can get the other side, but that was not fun. Um, like borderline mental breakdown and stuff. So what we'll do now um, is just quick run through because it, it's very difficult to actually show the bolts. What you're looking to do is this sits onto this plastic piece, which has another plastic guide piece here which then goes into the captive bolts, the captive nuts down here. So you have a lot of lining up to do, and it's just, it's proving very, very difficult. 
and very unpleasant. But we'll get this side fitted up. Um, something that I think is unavoidable. So if you ever plan on taking this off, um, I have scratched the into the, the actual arms here. I see no way not to do that. I think if you're going to fit this kit, um, you're, you're going to scratch the arms on your bike, which I'm not going to lie, if, if this bike wasn't my daily beater bike that I planned on keeping for a long time and just doing stuff to, I'd be really, really, really annoyed by that. If I owned a nice bike, like a newer VFR or something, yeah, we're near an airport, sorry, um, I would be pissed off. Uh, genuinely, if this was a fitting kit for a more premium model or something, I would be really annoyed. This, this shouldn't happen. All they have to do is widen those plastic box, that little bit more, those plastic blocks, that little bit more, have the arms out that little bit further and have your through holes out nice and wide and straight. It, it, the curvature is nice. From a design perspective, it looks good, but it doesn't need to be curved. You know what I mean? Curved only means the bolts have to go in like this. And because they're going in like that and you've made your, your nut, your captive nut of cheese, it just doesn't work out. Uh, for me, it's a no. The reason I'm using a chair, by the way, is because I might look young, but in reality, I am young, but my joints are really old. Right, so we finally got everything fitted. It was a pain, um, and it's not fit very well, so if you want to come a bit closer, you can see here I have used a cable tie in one of the holes because it just would not line up. Like There was no way in hell one of these bolts was ever actually going to fit through here. So what I'm going to do instead later is I'm going to just drill a through hole um, and get a longer bolt because the, sh the bolt that came with the kit isn't long enough in order to, to finish that off. So we will do that. But onto this, what we're going to do now is tighten up this honeycomb which sits onto the back. Uh, it actually does look nice once it's fitted. It's nice and sleek, but it was an absolute nightmare to fit. And I know of someone who has a shad, um, who has a shad... Uh, tank bag and it was the same fitting it was kind of a bit of a pain so I don't know can I recommend them from a fitting perspective but I do like how it looks um it wasn't that cheap or anything so it's not like it was super cheap and that's what that's what you know made it made it fit like this I think it's just possibly bad design I, I don't know how you'd say it we're going to tighten this up and we'll have a look then afterwards okay so that's the um the very back fitted what we're going to do now is actually fit the top box and see what it looks. Oh, there we go. It's fitted. <laughs> Let me come around and have a look at it. So it does actually look nice and sleek on the bike. Um, Chad make a claim actually that, uh, that all of their um, luggage top boxes can fit a full face helmet, so let's try that. Let's be fair about it. We'll take off the GoPro mount. Okay, yeah, they can fit a full face helmet. That's actually really handy. I'm just gonna take off this sticker. But I'm actually, despite the fact that the fitting kit is horrendous, I'm pretty happy with how the overall, you know, fit and finish is. It's really solid on the bike, even with a cable tie in place of a bolt. So, you know, it is what it is. The actual opening, closing mechanisms, mechanism is really good. And when it's locked, it feels really, really solid. So with all that, I am pretty happy with it. You know, I can fit my full face helmet in there, which is one thing that I really wanted to do for a long time is uh, fit something in there, such as a helmet. But what this is mainly going to be used for me is when we're going on trips, just you know, fill it up with, you know, clothes and food and probably camera equipment mostly to be honest um, but the actual overall construction feels really solid there is a good good strong lip here there's a good strong lip here um, which is apparently what well, waterproofs it I don't feel any seal per se there is a kind of a double liner there but whether this actually is weatherproof um, remains to be seen but we'll find out so overall from a fitting perspective without being too harsh about it this was a nightmare um, now, is the fitting kit the exact one for this bike? Maybe it isn't, but that's not on me. You know, I went through the exact bike I had at the, the Shad stall at Motorcycle Live. Um, you know, was there, was not in any rush, so we could have went through it in more detail. The salesman was very, very helpful, very, very friendly. I'll give them that. But, um, 
It's probably off camera. Is it off camera? It's not off camera. You can see me doing that. Uh, I just have to blur my hand. Sit on it and spin. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> the actual salesman was really, really helpful, really, really friendly. But whether or not it's his fault, maybe this is the wrong fitting kit. I'm not going to comment. It looks right, and it's, it's as close as it can possibly be. So unless the, old, the older S1 phaser, or just normal phaser, um, had slightly different grab handles. I don't think it did, but if it did have slightly different grab handles, then um, maybe that's the reason. If that is the case, as I said, not my fault. I gave the exact specification year, all that stuff, uh, to the salesperson when I was there. But actual fit, you know, it's really solid. Like, I can shake the whole bike with it now. So it is bolted on nice and tight. Um, I'd be fairly comfortable putting good weight in there and traveling with it. Um, but from, from, from a fitment perspective, the rail is, is awful, and it has damaged the actual grab arms on the bike, um, which was unavoidable. Like, no matter what I did, they weren't, they simply aren't wide enough to, um, to accommodate the bolts, so it is what it is, unfortunately. But I will keep you updated on how this go wears weather-wise uh, and long-term-wise. We'll keep an eye on it and see was it worth the money. Uh, what, what I spent on this was, I think, about €210 Euro for the fitting kit and the top box altogether. I did get a free backrest with it, but the backrest, I'll show you. So this is the backrest, and I am going to fit it um, for when people come on the bike with me, but you might notice... You might notice this backrest uh, requires bolt holes, but there's no holes in the top box. And worse yet, there's no guide markers on the inside. <laughs> Unless those are it, so I'm not sure. Possibly those are it, and if those are the guide holes, then I apologize. But I did get a free backrest, through, which, which looks nice, and I would hopefully feel nice for, for toaster um, when it's on the bike with me. So yeah. I won't lie, this has been a far longer evening than it was supposed to be to fit a top box. So I am really disappointed with the actual fitment uh, of the box. Happy with the finish, happy with the look. Um, yeah, if you watch, thanks for watching. <laughs> we have a noisy Mexican in the garage tonight, apologies. <laughs> um, if you've liked the video, don't forget to like it. And, you know, in physical terms, hit the thumb, thumbs up. And subscribe if you want to see more. Because if you don't subscribe, I actually will melt away into nothingness and cease to exist, which would be really sad for everyone involved, probably. Or maybe you'd be happy, who knows. But yeah, maybe, maybe hit subscribe. Um, and if you want to see the, any of the work I've done with this bike or my other bike, um, there's playlists there, and there's lots of videos of them being toured around Ireland, so check them out too. Um, I also have new pegs, LSL pegs, coming for this bike. Uh, also bought a motorcycle live. Uh, a rad guard bought from Beowulf, which looks really nice. It's going to be powder coated black and it's laser cut. And I have a clutch line from HEL coming for the Magna, which I'm really excited to fit because the clutch is shocking on it anyway. So, yeah, that's it for now. As a final end of video challenge thing, I suppose, um, you might notice I introduced another camera recording in this, so it's just testing it out. So, uh, what do you think of the other camera angle? The one. Uh, what do you think of the looks of it? What do you think of it? And what do you think I should do with this? Thanks for watching. Adios.